See, the problem with that box is that vertical thruster blows right down into it, you know? Yeah. So, so sorry, um, that box being the starboard box? or The starboard box. Okay. The, yeah. Okay, the so but the forward box doesn't get thruster washed generally, and, it, and we don't have a lot of current right now. It looks like very little to none. Okay, so I um, think, I, th so I think we can do yeah. forward box then. then. Let's try if the we forward don't box. Whip it open like too fast, then it should be okay. Okay, all right. Yeah, let's let's do forward box then. I think that's a great plan. Thank you. Sorry, I, I get confused, so sometimes <laughs> I need clarification. <laughs> okay, yeah. Thanks for confirming that. Okay, yeah. Forward box it is. Mm. Okay, I guess we're semi-stable. Mentally? Mm -hmm. No. That's a no, no, no. debatable. <laughs> 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 you see that was a pretty much universal response, and that's why I love this watch. <laughs> <laughs> you completed the move, so. Let's yeah. See. Yeah, we were like at the end of the tether, so. Yeah, I'm not getting okay. pulled, but I can see myself nudging a little bit. Do you want me to pull it a little bit further back? Yeah, <coughs> if we can. Hey, I'm getting pulled. I see it now. Yeah. Catalina can do it all. Mm -hmm. Amazing navigator and the greatest watch the world has ever known, mm -hmm. along with Two amazing pilots. We've got Zach back on in the Herc seat, Ooh. which we're all excited for. Mm. Not all of us. <laughs> 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 Robert's just busting oh, us left and right, I love man. It. I love it. <laughs> we know you don't want to act like it, but you love being the great teacher that you are. Just will never, never give a little hint. We're on to you, though, Aquaman. <laughs> we know. We know. Putting it in this whole time. Robert's not only uh, seen so many amazing uh, things in the deep ocean himself, but contributed to uh, the learning of so many others who have gone on to be uh, outstanding ROV and, and submarine submersible pilots. So. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool legacy. Mm -hmm. Even uh, one of his one of his trainees on on board International Space Station right now. Isn't that right, Robert? Oh, no, no. <laughs> she was a, <laughs> still is an engineer. Actually, she's like an ad adjutant. Yeah. Uh, engineer at Hui. Yeah. Take a zoom, Amber. That's good. She did all the weight balance stuff for the submarine. Wow. That's so cool. But I, yeah, I got to do a couple dives with her. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so plan of attack here. We're going for the whole enchilada? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. The whole, yeah, the whole organism is important for some of the research, the characteristics. So, yeah. Thank you. Can we zoom in? Yeah. Can zoom a little bit more? Or you're on the side of it, yeah. Kind of awkward over here. Yeah, because we want the the hold fast underneath the sediment, right? Yeah. Well, so, yeah. you know, it's got a cutting awesome. blade here. So that's sort of an issue, perhaps. I could try and grab it with the fingers, but that's not. Yeah. It's not really what the fingers are made for. So what do you mm. want to do? You can try with the fingers first, if can, and then the, the blade.
Okay. See how easily it comes wow. out? Wow. Oh, incredible. Got it. Fantastic. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. Awesome, wow. Robert. Well, don't have it yet. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. Which box is it? Uh, Omega. Okay, back so up a little bit. Starboard side. Beautiful creature. Mm -hmm. yeah. So grateful to be able to learn more about it. Yeah, Ola and Kanaloa. Eola. And so gracefully done, too. Mahalo, Robert. It's not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I can see the Chrysogorgid on the other side. Beautiful collection. No, Thank no. you so much. Oh. Wow. All right, if you're at home, give give that team a round of applause. Nice work. Stunning. Yeah. Nice work, everybody. Stunning. Awesome. Thanks, oh, y'all. Thank you so much. Hey, Nav, uh, just confirming that this is sample 097. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. That's fantastic. You know these. Um, you know we take these samples oh, and. Oh, you got a uh, positive tether wrap. Yeah, you know, you're going right. Yeah. We're we'll really grateful it, right? for uh, being able to collect these samples and also, you know, there's someone on board who who will be utilizing this sample as part of their thesis, I believe, um, and it's mm -hmm. going to be really important for them in the future. And um, and it's you know, it's a. You know, I think one of the things that they're looking into is actually heat tolerance as well and, and depth um, oh, and, and okay. some of those differences. Um, and that's that's incredibly important, especially now with, uh, you know, climate change, too, and, mm -hmm. and how different organisms are able to survive in different heat. You know, some people, uh, yeah, it's some people doing that research uh, really think that there are ways that, um, you know, we might be able to find different organisms with higher heat tolerances and such, and that could be really useful. And so, and you know, that's uh, yeah, could have implications for what we understand about the adaptability of these organisms, because yeah, climate change will eventually um, be uh, felt on the seafloor too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's already being felt. True. Yeah. yeah, yeah. True. So that's um, pretty cold here. Yeah, we've seen uh, some yeah. changes in uh, bottom water circulation patterns, if I'm not mistaken. I think yeah. I saw that in the news a while ago. Yeah, there's uh, some of that, but also uh, temperature has been slightly increasing in some locations. But um, the real one of the real changes that you see, um, not quite to this depth, but between like five five hundred and uh, uh, you know about two thousand meters, there there have been changes in the the pH and the aragonite saturations, the aragonite and calcite saturation states uh, um, yep. of the Pacific that has been changing um, pretty drastic. Uh, well, uh, you know, <coughs> in, in a way that has been notable in the last several years. Yeah, and uh, if, if you're listening to us, uh, 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 yeah, uh, in, for the viewers out there who may not know, um, Calcite and aragonite are, uh, you know, big structural things. This is uh, the kind of mineral that you use for your skeleton. So um, changes yeah. in how uh, this mineralization occurs can have uh, really profound consequences for uh, the survival of a uh, number of species. Yeah, and so some of those species in 
include um, mollusks, so you know mussels and such. You've got your your arthropods that have those shells. I mean, it's a, a similar, you know. And then, but um, the immediate the immediate organisms that struggle are the um, the corals. Yep. Um, you know, so that's uh, yeah. So it's interesting to see that. Wait, what is that? Yeah. Are you looking at that too? Uh, yeah. Go look at it. That looks clear, and then it just opened. Oh, it might be in the, well, let's... I was like, was that a black coral? But then I saw something stick out at a strange angle. Yeah, it's looking like a black coral. Yeah. Ah, it's just at a weird angle. Yeah. I still like a zoom. It'd be great. We've seen several <laughs> of these and we haven't zoomed in on it. So that would be awesome if possible. Yep. Can I get a zoom real quick, Amber? Rocks are looking a little pancakey around here. Oh, Not quite the shape that we want to see for uh, igneous work, so. Keep an eye on, uh, <clears throat> always keep an eye on what the lithology looks like. That zoom is awesome. That is beautiful. So yeah, it's not the perfectly symmetrical kind because you have mm -hmm. the branches that are just alternating uh, uh, yeah. side to side. Wow. That is fantastic. Awesome. Thank you so much for that Zoom. Mm -hmm. rocks. Mm -hmm. I like pancakes. I like pancakes too, just I don't like it when my rocks are pancakes. Ah. <laughs> or your pancakes are rocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're oh, yeah. unfortunately um, a little less edible. I don't, have, I don't have that problem that often though. My I pancakes hope not. being rocks. Yeah. I imagine you're a better cook than that. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer waffles. Especially oh. given that you were telling us about uh, lasagna earlier. Ooh, I yeah, do. I do fun. like to make lasagna. Yeah, it's mm, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I love it when I, I happen upon like the, the gluten-free lasagna sheets at the mm. store. They don't always have them around, so yeah. sometimes they're hard to find because then it's lasagna time, and I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> lasagna time. <laughs> Wonderful, it's yeah. It's been a pretty big pasta shortage. It's been hard to get lasagna noodles. Really? Yeah. Pasta shortage. There's something you never hear of because we're so used oh, to that rice, being a stable. Too, actually, you know, there's. I'm sorry, there's a rice shortage. There was, yeah. Wow. It's terrifying. It's Tariffs on China and uh, oh, sure, I'll try Ukraine. Russia. Wheat in Ukraine. The worst yeah. was cat food. Cat food. Been cat food was really hard to come by yeah. for a while. Really? Was Which, uh, that was just oh a conspiracy man. to get yeah. rid of the cats. Which is a little <laughs> stressful when you have cats that are very picky about their yeah. wet food. Oh. Or have allergies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Another sign we've gone too far, <laughs> my friends. <laughs> You're convincing my no one. My cat is allergic to protein. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> You're you're no. <laughs> we have completely <laughs> mutilated all life out of these creatures. <laughs> this is terrible. I know you love them, but they're not even real. <laughs> Their claws are real sometimes. You might as well get a stuffed animal. Hey, Dan, have you seen no. the video of the Russian couple who have a uh, cougar for a pet? Oh, no love way. cougars. That's it's what actually, I'm talking about. <laughs> videos of it actually being like they're playing with it. They're throwing balls, like little plastic balls. You know how dogs will chew on plastic bottles? Yeah. <laughs> cougars chewing on the plastic bottle. 
Yeah, I had oh, a friend wow. who had a had a bear once, a brown bear, oh grizzly gosh. bear. Wow. What? A couple uh, friends yeah. who had tigers. Yeah, you know, it's it's fun for a while, but they deserve to be in the wild, these guys. Yeah, Come on. I was going to say, that sounds a little bit more of a handful than um, is advisable. Mm -hmm. No, they're way less of a handful than your all ridiculous cats <laughs> who can't even <laughs> eat meat. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Come on. You just send the bears and the tigers and the cougars outside. They're fine. Oh, my. They eat the neighbors. Oh. <laughs> hey, my cat what is a like? huntress. She oh can, you know, hunt geckos and little oh, birds. Yeah. All our native oh. birds, right? Yeah. Yep, yep, I know. <laughs> our endangered birds. Yeah, I know. No, she's not that yeah. quick. I mean, uh. she's, <laughs> she's not, not, not that She just goes I after the hide. pigeons. Yeah. No, yeah, my, my cat, um, you know, she keeps our house safe. She keeps the house safe from uh, lizards. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're very dangerous yeah. lizards. Yeah, yeah very hey, dangerous we, lizards. I have found lizards in planters before, and I'm like, you've been here a while, haven't you? So <laughs> oh, it's great that we have a cat now um, who, oh, who no. makes us very aware of the fact that there's a lizard in the, the house. The lizard is a great pet. The cat should be sent away. <laughs> that's, that's my tabby back in here. <laughs> I'm definitely yeah. outnumbered. I know. I'm doing this for fun. Yeah. I just like the abuse. I'm it. glad you all have cats and you love them. It's wonderful. Yeah. You're yeah, my, my tabby is a good roacher. So when we were still in El Paso, which, you know, roaches are all over El Paso, yeah. um, one one would sneak in every now and again. And uh, um, yeah, he, he'd get them for me. Yeah. No, it's wonderful. Aww, that's so nice. He would not get them for you. He Mostly. would get them for himself. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. They bring, they bring their it's mutualism. Yeah. They it yeah. is mutualism. <laughs> See, even, even Robert knows. Yeah. Oh. It's an I, offering. I have a cat, but it's a feral cat. There you go. There now you I'm, go. now we're talking. But she's sort of my feral cat. So I've had her for five years. But. Robert sort of has a cat. It's well, feral. It's basically a cougar. Yeah, that is a it nice lives outside, folder. it won't come inside. That's a good cat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Rain or shine, she's outside. <laughs> and what do you do when you ha when you come on board the ship, I Robert? Like that bowl. Uh, the neighbor I like that bowl. The neighbor nice feeds her. That's how it goes. I'm glad you I'm glad you caught the reference. Of course, who could not catch the reference? <laughs> it's people who are too busy talking about cats. <laughs> <laughs> That's who didn't get the I'm okay if we switch the conversation topic to waffles. Waffles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> French toast is better. Uh, Ooh, oh, yeah. boy. Oh, French boy. Toast French toast or waffles, Internet? French you toast. tell us. The chat waffles. box is back waffles. open. Waffle. Waffle. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, I'm sorry. You're just wrong. <laughs> 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 Amber's cat really likes French toast better than... Uh, <laughs> They Gosh. eat, they eat oh. French toast oh and ice cream. Gosh. They cuddle with us. What have we done? They bring us <laughs> gifts. And then we wonder why the planet is just falling apart. Yeah. Come on. You're right. It's definitely Come the on. cat's fault. It's the, cat. <laughs> it's the, it's the devil cats. They've I cannot, tricked us. I cannot keep vanilla gelato in the house because my tabby will just go bonkers for it and will, like, invade my space and oh not stop gosh. if I have any of it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. What a great feline friend. Oh, my <laughs> They love all the same things we do. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't love us as much as we love them. It's okay, Dan. I'm with you because I can't have cats because my wife and daughter are severely allergic. So. Oh, no. Oh, you should get the cat that I have because I'm severely allergic. We've, try we've tried different cats and stuff like that because my, my wife's kind of like, eh, maybe and then <laughs> also because i had a friend who had a really bad experience with cats so ever since oh. then it's been kind of like traumatized me a little bit he had uh, he breeds koi some really beautiful koi and he got this one type type of koi from japan spent a few thousand dollars on Ooh. it like like six thousand dollars on this koi oh my gosh yes and um well no. That koi was a very oh, expensive <laughs> dish for a cat. No. Cat probably didn't even eat it. Probably went and had French toast after. Just killed it. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why he knew that his cat was, or his koi was gone, because the koi was in pieces in the oh. backyard. Oh. And he no. was severely, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Hong, for oh, listening. Oh, that's the worst. But he was severely, he was very upset. So, <laughs> I don't know what happened after that. I didn't see the cat afterwards. I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, can't no. blame the cat. It's just can't blame the cat. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Yeah, they're natural. Oh, we have yeah. nothing. I mean, when they were born, 
You serious? cannot blame the cat. You can only blame humanity. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, and cats, are, what cats are just the chaos that we let, let into our lives. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Ooh, there's something red there. I know, that's what's going towards right now. Mm. Yeah. Good call. <laughs> Distract us from You guys are wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I love you all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah, I'm hearing a, a broad lack of consensus on French toast, waffles, and pancakes. It's so tough. French Can't French we just have all three? No. Yeah. French toast all the way. Unless you go to we can go to Loose Caboose, get them fried, all three of them. <laughs> yes. yeah, okay. With our Twinkies. And our butter. <laughs> Stick of butter. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Are we going to fry it? <laughs> yeah. Is there fried maple syrup, too? The, the fried maple syrup. Yeah. Mm. Fried yeah. maple yeah. syrup? Yeah. Is that a bit? Is that a. Uh -oh. oh, it's an anthemic. It's a mushroom coral. It's, a, it's Yeah. Fully retracted. Mm. Is it a pseudo or a. Pseudo. Pseudo. Yeah. yeah, okay. I'm getting way too Whoa, good there's at a, these. there's a cat yes. face. Do you guys see the cat see face the cat on the pseudo <laughs> 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 It's a sign you should it's get right a cat. <laughs> it's, a <sign. laughs> it's a sign that the world is ending. <laughs> it looked like a lion. Kind of it did. It did, yes. It did. Uh, yeah. It has revealed. Push the camera forward. It's okay. push forward. I'm going to refocus know, it myself. It's okay. weird, doesn't it? Yeah, unless uh, the porch didn't get pushed out, did it? I don't think so. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's yeah, it kind of does look like a cat. Does this look like my tofu's face? <laughs> she has a green eye and one blue eye. Aww. She's that's really pretty, pretty. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, she yeah. was the only one in her, in her litter, but she's also just. Yeah, that's um, back as far as it's gonna yeah, go. Yeah, she's strange. She's like socially <laughs> awkward, very skittish. Oh, oh, she's strange. She's that a strange is definitely little a lion's cat. face. It's the humans, Dan. <laughs> it's the humans. Yeah. So one of my cats will come when she's called. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, where there's big rocks, you know, you, yeah. you're setting the, the rear of the vehicle down on them all the time. So, are we good here? I think I think we're good here. Okay. Zach, I just noticed you have your speaker on with the bridge. I don't know if that's meant to be that way. I don't think so. It's off now. Okay. <laughs> They're probably like, what the hell is like, going what on? What are they talking about up there? <laughs> <laughs> French toast, cats. <laughs> yeah. So one of my cats comes when called most of the time. Aww. And uh there are times when I'm hanging out in one part of the apartment or like working or something and all of a sudden just hear her like just start yelling from the other from another part of the apartment usually the bathroom and uh, uh, this this started sometime last year and uh, I quickly figured out that when she does that it's basically she wants to be called over so I have to call her over Aww. then she comes over and she gets pets or wrestles or whatever and then things are okay for a couple minutes and then it starts again. <laughs> like, it's, it's just like, it's, it's one of her, I don't know if it's a game or what, but she just loves getting called over and getting pets. And sometimes, and she's got me trained to do this Yes, now. you are being ruined by your cat, though. <laughs> oh, that happened this. a long time ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do not regret this. I do Point not of regret no return. It. <laughs> oh. I'm glad that uh, you all have this cat love in your life. Well, I need I need the I need the chaos coming from somewhere other than just myself. <laughs> <laughs> you get more reptiles. Oh, actually, you don't have any reptiles. I have reptiles. <laughs> <laughs> I have a dog. I have a dog too, and I fish. Is it also feral? Is it a reptile? <laughs> <laughs> feral? The dog is not feral. The dog is definitely not feral. Dog is easy. <laughs> <laughs> the cat sort of is. <laughs> and yes, to our watchers, we know that dogs are definitely not reptiles. <laughs> <laughs> He's a senior dog, right? Huh? He's an older dog? Yeah. She's, Aww. I got her old. She's a rescue. Well, she's yeah. at the rescue right now, actually. So I have to take her back there when I go to sea. But it's, it's a... It's a small sponge. I, the guy's house, so she has free reign of the whole house. Nice. It's not Do you like want to look at a it? cage. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to look at the sponge? Yeah, we could take a quick look. Okay. Trying to see if it's stocked or not. 
It looks like it is. Look at you saying your biology words. <laughs> I've seen enough of these in the last two, so two expeditions. Yeah. Hey, I, I listen. I sometimes remember names. Well, I mean, it's one thing to remember a name. It's another thing to remember that, you know, an important character, you know. Uh, the things that grow in the rocks are important too. Of sponge, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it's 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 actually super interesting. Yeah. Well, I, right. I, I, I really that. it is a small stocked maybe a small stock bolosoma. Yeah. And it has a shrimp friend. With a shrimp friend. <laughs> I mean just I, waiting for it to get big enough so that it can jump yeah. in. Yeah. I, I'm not very good with taxonomy just because I haven't really kind of gone through it um in in any detail. Like I like that's something I just need to study more, but uh yeah, it's 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 it, it's really interesting just kinda seeing just mm -hmm. how the seafloor actually does work and just how integral, you know, the mm -hmm. geology and biology yeah. are. So oh, but it's also things you not don't get to see with dredging. Yeah, it's also not something you have to study because that's something that you can rely on other people for. True. Which is nice. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's 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 fun it's fun picking up a little bit of a working knowledge. Oh, absolutely. Though, so. yeah. Absolutely. Adam Sewell did that when he was out here in the last leg. Oh yeah. Yeah. He got to be pretty good at IDing all the corals. Nice. <laughs> Adam's a good dude. <laughs> That's fun. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Zoom. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Adam is the reason why we have a rock saw on Port Nautilus now. Oh, cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I only mentioned that because I think it's really important to have collaboration and also to understand, oh, yeah. like, to know what you don't know, you know? Like, yeah. No, collaboration like I, is I'm, everything. Yeah. If I, like, if I'm not going to... Uh, I didn't, you know, I'm not going to try to identify rocks to their age or anything like that without expert knowledge. And, yeah. you know, I think it's important to, uh, to and it, take, it takes years to become an expert and, you know, just, you know, one or two really narrow uh, fields of study. So, yeah, you know, we can't do it all. We got to work together. Right. And, and you can, you can do it's more, more fun anyway. Yeah. It's more fun, but also you can have greater reach in your research um, mm -hmm. if you do incorporate other fields and other people with with their experiences and their expertise you know you can do a, a broader band of, of research that can be really uh, interesting yeah no super fruitful and those crossovers are where a lot of new and innovative science happens too so there's there's no end to that kind of value right you know something that i literally was just thinking about was the fact that actually in my lab i do you know one of the things we do is we go through and we look at the sediment right and we're like all right what are these corals growing on top of and we're like all right this is the salt we got carbonate you know and then we we have like a rough size estimate but like how interesting would it be if we could if we could go like even deeper and be like okay this is a low weight flow this is you know a sheet flow this is uh you know um Botryoidal, you know, and and like, yeah. you know, because I'm sure that we see different things on these different morphologies. Sometimes we see purple things. Ah, we do, you know. But yeah, Very having purple. having the ability to kind of uh, more mm -hmm. finely distinguish what you're looking at, yeah, right, that can definitely have some advantages for you. That's interesting too, yeah. But I wouldn't have thought of that until I talked to a geologist. Right. Yeah. You know. You know. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Most of us don't know what we don't know. <laughs> There's a whole uh, kind of field emerging over the last few decades, complex system science, trying to integrate data from across many different disciplines to allow us to have exactly what we're Virginia is kind of describing, this more, uh, mm -hmm. this more holistic view of, of some of the environments that, we, that we're tuning into through our various scientific disciplines. So. You yeah. said that was complex system science. Yeah, Arizona State University has a has a whole college dedicated to complex complex adaptive systems, and uh, oh, that's awesome. It's uh, it's it's pretty cool. The Santa Fe Institute as well for those who are interested in uh, the intersection of physics and uh, geology and biology and chemistry. Um, they do incredible and economics, uh, also social environments. They do some incredible research out of Santa Fe Institute. So. Check them out. All right. Is 
Come back up. All right, thanks for the zoom. Yeah, it's well, lovely. Yeah, that was. What do you think, it's still acting? on its body makes me think it's something else oh, okay but i'm also probably wrong so yeah, yeah, you know you you uh, you ooh. saw what you saw you you were great <laughs> oh Thanks. the file moved just as i was clicking on it uh here's this still <laughs> cam I, I don't know how to zoom in though <laughs> oh it yeah. could be yeah. price yeah. of gorgeous on that boulder there's oh, oh, for you. it's not bad Oh yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful Christ Gorgia. Yeah, so this one had like hair pody on the side, but I couldn't see a third line down, so mm. I'm like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. So Did that boulder once upon a time split though? Uh I was trying Ooh. to decide if that might have uh, been a larger one that broke apart or if it's two that just kinda tumbled down from somewhere and ended up next to each other. Because I looked at it and I was like, it looks kinda like it just broke He's apart once upon a time. You think this tumbled? It could have. It doesn't it's the size of Hercules. They're they're kind of they're kind of sitting uh they're 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 kind of sitting not near anything else. I mean, if, if, if the potential energy is good enough, uh, you know, high enough, uh, they could have tumbled down from somewhere a little uphill. Uh, no, there's not a whole lot more uphill that they could have come from. It looks like they're on part of this uh, part of this. Uh, <laughs> Sort of. They're they're a little downhill from the top of the ridge, though. Interesting. Yeah. It's waypoint six isn't exactly Looking on the top this, of the ridge. The sonar image there, it sort of looks like there's a little canyon. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to interpret from high pack here, and uh, I I think the sonar is a little higher res. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of uh, Split Apple Rock or Tokonga Fa in. Uh, Tasman Bay in, in Aotearoa, north side of the South Island of New Zealand. I have a picture pulled up, Val, check that out. As oh, a geologist, yeah. that's gotta be pretty cool, isn't that it? That is cool. Split just perfectly, right in half in yep. sphere. Yeah, sometimes you get boulders that split like that because of uh, freeze-thaw cycles in uh, colder climates too. Oh, interesting, yeah. that would make sense. Tokongofa, uh, Nelson, right outside the town of Nelson, uh, Abel Tasman National Park on the South Island of Aotearoa, New Zealand. If you haven't been there, save up, take a trip. It's beautiful. Yeah. Nice weather all times of the year. You'd be surprised sometimes just how much more powerful water is than rock. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's how we got the Grand Canyon. Yeah, Auckland has the same, same climate as San Diego. Yeah. There's sister right? cities, yeah. Oh. I wouldn't have expected that. It, yeah. I think they're so far south. So. It's the, yeah. the Maori name translates to the desired place. It's uh, Auckland is a beautiful, beautiful city and uh, mm -hmm. surrounded by incredible bays, waterways, and yeah, I was fortunate to spend a good, good amount of time back in July of this year. I've been to the North Island Maori and it's, it's gorgeous. It is, yeah. What took you out there? Well, I was there mainly for to enjoy some time with family and friends uh, and check out the uh, Women's World Cup, Soccer Ooh, World Cup, Football World Cup. So, very cool. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the star of that World Cup, the one with the, who got the award for the greatest goal, Linda, Colombian superstar. Yeah. Like, uh, just like our navigator. Yeah. Yay. Isa. Fishy. Ooh. It's got a fish. Cute fish. And uh, some sort of white coral there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we zoom on the fish? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, good family fun, good, good time adventuring uh, around Aotearoa. It's their winter time, so it's a little bit, a little bit colder. Some people might want to go around uh, December, January, February. Beautiful uh, southern hemisphere summer weather. Looks like maybe another one of those uh, befitted, um, fitted. Oh, look at that yeah, hiding at spot! Oh, I thought he was going to get in. Yeah. Come on.
Well, we can take a look at that coral. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's really cool. Maybe we'll get to sail down there when we're uh, Hoku Hokuleo. Voyaging oh, canoe, people awesome. have heard uh, heard us talking about before. We'll be uh, likely in Aotearoa uh, at the end of next year, mm -hmm. and uh, spend four or five months um, visiting our Maori friends and family down there. Oh, that sounds wonderful! Yeah, Aotearoa would be that would be a cool place to sail. Absolutely. Oh, you'd love it. Amazing revitalization of their waka culture, their voyaging mm -hmm. co culture. Uh, Sir Heck Busby. Uncle Heck uh, passed away a couple of years ago, but uh, left an incredible legacy of revitalization of voyaging traditions. And yeah. if you uh, if you meet a Maori, if you meet a, a Maori person, you can ask them what is their waka, what is their canoe, oh, yeah, it's where their lineage exactly. starts. Have you ever been Mahina? No. I haven't. Oh, I haven't it's lovely. Been to this is looking yeah. like a Chrysogorgia. Like it's planar. It's its polyps are coming from one side of a branch, um, which makes me think it's that um, R. militaris. Uh, but it's got slightly different branching. But it looks like maybe the branch has actually got uh, damaged mm. on the left side by something. Yeah. And is it just me or like does the skeleton also look kind of like a darker color, like a black coral skeleton too? You know, or some of these, yeah. So that is that. That's not um. A chrysogorgias can have a, a kind of gold, a dark gold. Um, I'm not sure about these ones in specific. I think they're they are. You know, chrysogorgias are known to are known and called sometimes a gold coral because of its beautiful gold. Um, uh, uh, skeleton. Um, it does look a little bit darker than I think what we see behind a lot of the pink corals, but um, uh, Masako says sometimes mm -hmm. Chrysogorgids have uh, darker branch colors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah. So is this a planar Chrysogorgid, kind of like uh, the pink one that we saw earlier? Does that classify as, as that? This is planar. Yes. yes. This okay. is planar. Um, it's got a very specific branching pattern. Um, yeah, it's very and distinct. It, yeah, it, it reminds me of what used to be called Plurigurgia militaris, and now is um, our. Um, oh, is this what militaris. the last watch saw? Or something like it? Um, uh, I think. Uh, I think we did see some of them. Okay. Remulagorgia, I think. Um, it's got slightly different polyp size and, and branching, but it's, um, yeah. Yeah, okay, yes. Uh, Asako agrees that it could be a Remulagorgia militaris, so. Okay. Yeah. Very exciting. That is. That's cool. Okay, I gotta get up and go. All right. Yeah, let's awesome. make a move. Thank you so Mahalo. much. Mahalo. Much appreciated. Uh -huh. 36 some minutes left in our watch. Some really uh, interesting environments off the south island of New Zealand, deep in fjordlands in, this, in the far Ooh, south, fjords. because there's very little light. And so even though they don't get that deep, my understanding is that the, envir the benthic environment is much like the deep sea. You find some of the same creatures, some of the same organisms, or, or uh, similar organisms in, uh, in those environments within, the, within those fjords. Uh, and I thought that was pretty interesting to learn. It's, it's almost actually, like the deep sea gets brought to the surface because of the conditions. It's actually not uncommon um, yeah. in fjords um, in the north as well. Um, oh, in awesome. uh, Norway, you can get some of these deep sea sclerotinians um, mm. up to like 30 meters. Whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, wow. Which is amazing. It also means that they can do a lot of research on some of these really, you know, deep communities. Mm. Um, Way more accessibly. Very, ex I mean, reasonably accessible. And they, um, there's, there's groups that go out in that area and do like... Um, um, oxygen, like respiration studies, yep. and they can trace carbon, you know, across because it, it is more accessible, you yeah. know. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting, you know, that, that accessibility to science and space, and I mean, and then also just like research vessel vessels, right? Like, that is so important for getting being able to do research. Um, yeah. There was actually a paper recently that was talking about, and I've moved slightly over, um, but there was a um, that uh, there was a research paper recently looking into 
what countries have access to deep sea vehicles. All oh, right. Yeah. You know, Not many. And that and that difference in accessibility, right? Yeah. And how that and and basically as a as a tool to be like, hey, if you if you're from a country or you have access to an ROV, that means that we need to be reaching up. We are we need to be um, bringing up people you yeah. know, and reaching out and making, especially because there's actually a lot of research that goes on in some of these countries done by, outsiders, by yeah. outside countries with that parachute have access. science. It's parachute yeah. science. And, um, That's right. while, you know, and, and it's, I, know, I understand that people, um, think it's, it is, it is very important to do this science, but it's really important to, to, um, incorporate communities. Um, and to incorporate other people and to support early career researchers and and even long-term research you know it's it's just it's so important to, to support people and and bring you know it's it's that like you know um when you're moving up the ladder you bring people up with you yeah. you know yeah. Absolutely. And, um, and so i'm just like I yeah no that. accessibility is so important um, just wanna i'm gonna jump in for oh. a second here uh, this might be a good slope to look for a rock uh, once we have a good position to do that. Yeah, we can do that at any point here. Our okay. stops on the surface, so yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me get a little bit closer to Adelana and I'll probably stop. Okie doke. Sounds good. Just let me know if you see a spot that kind of catches your interest. Yeah, I am uh, looking. These are, uh, there's a lot of nice angular stuff around here. What, what about looking at some of these a little bit more closely? Okay. Just quickly lift up a friend, teacher, and inspiration, Asha DeVos. She uh, does amazing research in Sri Lanka, where she's from, and uh, advocates for, yeah, the sort of end of parachute science and collaborating with local scientists and, and mm -hmm. lifting up scientists from local communities to be able to study and care for protect oh that's cool their own environment Ashley yeah. devos should definitely check her out she's a she's a powerhouse yeah cool research on whales mm. oh fantastic uh could we zoom in a little bit please amber just trying to get a better look at uh some of these perfect thank you um i think that one looks pretty good that one yeah. Okay. Do you want me to come back out so you can see the arm? Okay. Yeah, we're still more or less at the same depth, but it, we've we've gone uh, quite a ways horizontally, so. Mm -hmm. Seems like this would be a wise thing to do before we uh, change watches. Yeah, why not? Great, yeah. yeah. Let's get another rock. Yeah, yep. we do only I have. We, I think we've only got two. Uh, 30 only minutes left. Oops, of only two. Yeah, half an hour left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to clarify, some folks uh, said, wait, what? Nautilus is going to New Zealand? Aotearoa? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. No, Mahina and I were talking about Hokuleo and uh, Hikianalia, the voyaging canoes. Uh, Nautilus will be making its way into the western and central Pacific in the coming years. Speaking of voyaging canoes, I just want to give a birthday shout out to Mo'olele. Mo'olele. Mo'olele hanau, aloha aloha hanau. I know that you're here with us right now in Po. Hey, oh. And mahalo for being a pahu, a vessel for all of us to get, um, continue our traditional, um, our traditions and our culture and also for Papa Mo and everybody who is in the Voyage community right now for keeping that alive. Oh, mahalo, kukui. Oh, yeah, Beautiful. Mahalo. Mm -hmm. Mo'olele, transitioning into Po during those recent fires, devastating fires in Lahaina mm -hmm. and uh, Sacred Canoe. Mm -hmm. So many of the hands of our teachers and mm -hmm. uh, our dear Ohanava'a on Maui. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, Ava'a Kaulua, double hull canoe is a, what I see as a classroom. Just ha, like, you know, the Nautilus is a classroom. It's a place where we work, we learn. Um, and voyaging canoes have been that for our people for generations. 
Um, so to be a young Kanaka and to have sailed on Va'a before when I was a child, I really feel like that helped me to cultivate a love for the Mona Nuiakea, for the ocean, for sailing, for voyaging, for exploration. And so to have that space, yeah, to have uh, that classroom, that va'a within our communities to help inspire Kiki is so imperative to the succession of va'a community and culture within our islands. And then we see it, I mean, in Southeast Alaska, in British Columbia and Haida Gwaii, all of these native communities are kind of, uh, there's a resurgence of their va'a or their waka. Um, their canoe culture and so to see that and to know that this is the way that our people have traveled for thousands of years um, and that now we're reconnecting with that in a, our contemporary ways and it's a beautiful thing it is a beautiful thing it is yeah So we have uh, several different grippers for this arm. And this is kind of a compromise because it's, you know, you can get rocks and you can get samples, but mm -hmm. it's gangly and it's horrible for rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Roger so, that. But we end up stuck using this thing all the time because everybody wants to do it all. So. But if you're going after rocks, it's better to use the smaller claw. And if you're going after samples, it's better to use the, the parallel grippers. But this thing's like grasshopper legs. So it's going, I think it's going in the side. Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Thank you. All right, what do we have open in the starboard bio box? We have B as in boy, C as in Charlie, D as in dog, and E as in elephant. Okay, excellent, thank you. Yeah. Ready to switch your uh, cell, uh, sample? Here too. Ready for 
box. Um, you have B, C, D, and E open. Nice shots. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Wonderful, Zach. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nav confirming that was sample 098. Got it. 098. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello again to all our viewers tuning in. Just collected another rock sample here mm -hmm. on Gambia Shoal. This is our 10th dive of the Ala Amwana Kaiuli expedition. You're listening to the one and only, 8 to 12. And uh, we're, we're glad you're here. We do have our, our chat and, and uh, comment box up, and we do love your positive thoughts. We love your great questions. We love your kindness, your encouragement, your aloha. Uh, we love your stories, uh, depth of perspective, and, uh, you know, there's some things we don't like, but uh, <laughs> but really, uh, we just feel lucky to have uh, so many deep sea travelers here with us, and uh, we hope you'll keep, keep sending on that aloha, and know that the team is great here. We have a, we have a whole and complete and uh, fantastic team filled with aloha, um, and, uh, but we love adding. We're always happy to make a bigger table, have you all join us for the journey. So thanks for coming. Yep. Yep, and we are currently just a little bit past uh, waypoint six out of 13 on this 24-hour uh, dive. It launched uh, right after lunch today. So 11 hours um, ago. Yeah, not quite halfway through. So we're making we're making excellent progress on this. We've uh, we've seen a lot of uh, pretty interesting uh, stuff so far. Um, a lot of chrysogorgids, a lot yeah. of sea pens. A couple of different chrysogorgids and sea pens as well. Yeah. Um, different from what we saw elsewhere, and uh, people. Uh, some scientists ashore who we collaborate with and couldn't do this without, um, you know, mentioned that they were very excited to have some some specimens, and so it was really great that we saw enough that we could sample. Yeah. Yep. Pretty good uh, uh, field here of uh, some pretty angular rocks, all about the right size. Mm -hmm. A lot that were smaller, but uh, a lot that are also the right size. So. Seemed like a good opportunity to get one since we hadn't uh, 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 sampled a, uh, we hadn't gotten, gone after a geological sample in a while. So. Yeah, Rare so for Dr. Great. Val to go three and a half hours with no rock right. sample. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, the I, patience. I, the uh, patience. I, I was uh, talking with Kukui earlier in the uh, uh, watch about where our uh, previous uh, rock sample had been taken and. Um, decided we, we'd wait till we got a little stratigraphically higher for that, but we've kind of been tr cruising along at about the same depth for most yeah. of this watch. Yeah. And at that point, um, it, it, once you get far enough away uh, from your last sample, it does become advantageous to uh, sure. sample again, even if you haven't changed uh, your vertical height a whole lot. So it, it was a decision based on kind of balancing time. those two things. That was awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we got a rock. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure it's going to teach rock. us some of its secrets. I've got a rock. Yeah. 
I want to give a quick shout out to uh, to Jason. Always uh, comes comes into our comments, uh, into the chat with encouragement. He says, "Sup, team." Uh, to all of you, uh, has been following along on most of our watches. Oh, so positive, super helpful. You know, sometimes tries to help us out if if it looks like, uh, you know, we have questions uh, ourselves here in the van. But always encouraging, Jason. We're we're glad you're listening. Um, I think also, am I, am I right, Jason? Are you are you tuning in from Michigan, Val Val's home state? I, uh, I think that's what I saw, what we saw last night. I yeah. I think so. Yeah. So uh, really appreciate uh, really appreciate when people have patience with us, share aloha with us, share great stories, encouragement. Love to come along for the fun as well. Jump mm -hmm. in with our jokes. Um, <laughs> we. Uh, we, we really appreciate that. That means a lot to us, so keep it up. And uh, yeah, Jason, we're you. glad you're here. Thanks for joining. Yeah, more the merrier. Mahalo nui, Jason. Yeah, this has been, you know, well, we might not have had the the uh, the forests that we've seen elsewhere that we got spoiled with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, totally. We certainly have seen a lot of abundance, and it's been, uh, you know, it's it's always it's really important to remember that. Um, and we, we did get our double octopus last night. Oh well, yes, there yeah. is that. Magical. But it's also really important to remember that this is this mm -hmm. is really important information that we're getting here. You know, what's yeah. on the seafloor itself. I mean, that's just so important. You know, no no one has seen this particular piece of um, seafloor before. You're yep. seeing it for the first time with us, you know? Um, and it's so important to know that actually there's a whole bunch of pebbles and sand on the seafloor right here, and there's not many corals. And But, you know, yeah, you move idea. on and you, f you might find more corals. And it's, uh, it's so important to see these differences and yeah, this helps us kind of map out like depths and distributions of our of these Absolutely. biological communities. So. Absolutely, yeah. across depth, across temperature. Maybe there's other environmental factors. You know, these are these are the questions that we're asking: is why do we see these organisms here, and why don't we see these organisms here? I'm going to say these are some precariously perched-looking sponges. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> that's, so. That one is already larger than the rock that it's on top of. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> remarkable. So. Yeah, there are all sorts of different factors to tease out with all of this. So this is just, you know, one one little piece of that puzzle. Very large, complicated puzzle. Oh, we might have some leave and spurn. Oh, wait. No, that's yeah. just flow. But anyways, yeah. No, so it's, it's just, you know, there's so much that we can learn. Oh, I see a shrimp, um, you know, from, <laughs> from dives that <laughs> Sorry. are, you know, it, it's still in abundance. It's still in abundance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I see another sea pen at the very bottom of the screen there. Just went under the porch. Oh, nice. Yeah, there it is. Another I think that's one a sea of the pen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that yeah, one. Good. Yeah. Oh, look at that. How great. Sure. Yeah, even if there's not the same level of biodiversity or general abundance, the fact that we're seeing new species, things we haven't seen before, that this seamount is a home to creatures that uh, must reside here for a reason, um, right. you know, and it's, uh, you know, habitats of all kind. I know some people will drive across deserts or certain ecosystems, grasslands, and say, oh, there's nothing here, but actually those are rich ecosystems. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, it's so rich. Yeah. And some of it's rich in, sp in ways that we can't see, you know, like underneath these, underneath some of the sediment there might be. But also, you know, like we've had a lot of joy tonight, you know, <laughs> just looking at some of these organisms and, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, shrimp. Oh, another shrimp. And uh, I mean, there was that lion-headed uh, anthemastus, <laughs> That's right, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Little it's gifts from the seafloor like that. Holotherian. Yeah. I want to call yeah. it the tofu anthemastus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The tofu oh. anthemastus. I like that, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, like tofu cap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, here it comes again. So, you know, it's just, yeah. No, it never a left. abundance. <laughs> We do have uh, a couple questions coming in, wondering, Zach, and, That's an and awesome zoom. Thank you so much. Robert, if, uh, what's the out. current like here? Yeah, hardly not, any. Not too bad, hardly any. And 
And we pretty much are up here on top of the ridge, yeah? Maybe in a little bit of a valley at the top of the ridge, but still up here. Uh, Makes it an interestingly shaped ridge. Oh, another xenophyophore. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. That's, We've I been seeing a lot of these lately. It's, um, they are, they're pretty common on sedimented areas. Yeah, yeah. and we usually don't stay on sediments like this. We like our ridges. I've been hopping around some sedimented areas. But this is a sedimented mm -hmm. ridge, so yeah. go bigger. It still blows my mind that those are uh, single-celled. That is what the internet says, you know? Yeah, I think that's spelled right. We're, uh, yep. The ship is moving just along the eastern edge of this ridge, but it's quite a wide ridge, actually. I know viewers at home can't necessarily sort of see um, the topo maps or the things we're using for navigation, but uh, the ship is slowly moving just off the eastern side of that ridge, but but we are uh, moving right down the center center line of it, maybe just off the center, but been pretty level, not really gaining much altitude very quickly. We are in a section where um, that was the plan. Between yeah. waypoints 5 and 7, there's very little. Actually, there's a a decrease in a little um, dip in huh? depth. Yeah, a little, a little bit, dip yeah. before we start getting steeper. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, some of it's uh, for the rocks. It's a good spot to find some of these rocks. So, um, yep. In between these uh, saddles is. That's why I uh, picked a uh, picked a window of opportunity there. So. Yeah, like for here our, it would for be our viewers. Uh, we put. Uh, topographic map. Oh, you're awesome. Nice. Amber to the rescue. You guys can see the waypoints uh, along that ridge line and the path that we're oh, taking nice. on a map that I think, Catalina, did we just make that map for Gambia Shoal? Yeah, so actually what we did is we mapped over existing data to okay. see what kind of difference there was. And I think you can see, so there's the Basically, the profile of our dive plan is on there, and if you look close enough, I can actually try and get into it and see if I can zoom in. You can see a difference in the track for the, our dive because that was based on the old data. Oh, so our new cool. data kind of pulled it down a little bit and awesome. refined it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. very cool. Nice. Thanks to our great mapping team. Catalina is not just a navigator, but working uh, on all her watches with the mapping team. We've got uh, the very well-known Rennie, to those who have followed yeah. along on board, and, and Derek doing a great job, and Mia as well. So uh, an awesome team down there um, managing all of our sonar data and, and building out these great maps and dive plans. Mm -hmm. It's pretty awesome to watch them do their work. Yeah, they process this data on the fly, too. They do. So. Yeah, we wouldn't be here without them. It's so much work, um, you yep. know, to get through all that data. And you know, I mean, what they're 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 looking at maps that they're making maps from sound. You know, it's uh, it's yeah. pretty amazing. It's science. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, they it's mostly magic. party down there in the data lab, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, uh, let's not go too crazy here. They mostly mostly partying down there. <laughs> But you're right. It is amazing. On the fly, they're just they're collecting the data, spinning it out into maps. Software do deserves a lot of the credit. Technologies do true. just you know is so there, amazing. There's a human touch to uh, in, uh, removing some of those bad pings. You know, there little is. outlier uh, outlier uh, reflections that come up in the data and make it a little bit noisy on the edges. Yeah, sure. So, and and yeah, it takes a human touch to get that right. Some people are wondering, uh, Val, about, you know, do we look for current or do we try to avoid it? How do we manage that tension? You know, there's obviously mm -hmm. Robert and Zach, we don't want to put them in currents that are too strong for them yeah, to be able to manage the ROVs. We don't like getting blown around. Um, yeah. it, it, uh, well, you can't really predict the current in the deep sea, especially in places where we haven't been. So yeah. we don't know what we're getting into with that yeah. on any that's given fair dive. Enough, that's fair. Um, there are models that they, that people can use, um, high com models. They're not not they're at much greater distances than even our um, and I, I believe our not information. But it's not that's quite not to the detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, one thing that you can look at is, um, I mean, over a ridge, you're gonna have high. You usually do have higher um, current, and the steepness is important. So um, I think it's a. Uh, 
current is something that is important, um, but it's as as Val said, it's not something that you always know beforehand. Yeah. So sometimes in the past, in my experiences, we will attempt to dive and then not be able to dive where we want to, and so then we'll have to hop around. Yeah. Um, to a location where the ROV can actually do some of the science that mm. we need. Mm -hmm. I think I've. I, it feels to me like being a novice at this, not not knowing much about it, but we sort of find those sweet spots where you have a little bit of current. It's it's rich in biodiversity because it's bringing a lot of food into the environment. It's yep. good for these filter feeders. And so it's kind of like, can we find a spot that's the sweet spot? Like the little right. bit of current, but exactly. yeah, not yeah. too much. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's sweet. Uh, the vehicles can only handle so much current. And then, you know, you have to worry about uh, uh, being able to maintain uh, control. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Does the, does we don't want to get blown into. Uh, we don't want to get blown into the seamount or right. anything like that. Yeah, I was just wondering if the front row has an, has a like a hard number or or an idea of the the level of current that is uh, does make it um, difficult or is like a no go fly. You know, current. Do you do y'all have a? a, we, a don't measure? Real, we don't have any way to really measure current mm -hmm. other than. Like you could just take your hands off the controls and let the vehicle drift. Is mm -hmm. an idea? It's just kind of an eyeball thing. You know, you look at the green snow going by, and, and then and basically you can feel it in the control of the vehicle. You got to mm -hmm. turn the joy gain. We have a joy gain control. It's normally we run like 50 percent. If you have to keep cranking that up in order to get enough power to drive into the current, then you eventually run out of, you know, it only has so much power. Yeah. Yeah. Limited by the power of those motors. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's a pretty low power vehicle. It's not like, you know, the, the uh, oil and gas fuel 200 horsepower vehicles. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we have coral, we have coral fans, deep sea coral fans <laughs> online saying we want it, they want an upgrade to Herx uh, thrusters so that we can well, deal with more current. <laughs> yeah. But Tell them to know. send us a check, right? <laughs> send us yeah. A check. Yeah. yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Actually, there is discussions to redo our hydraulic plant this winter. Awesome. Then yeah. is there a concern about just like power? But we d we're not going to get more power. So yeah. We only have so much power mm -hmm. because of the wire and the supply and you know everything. The whole infrastructure is built around that. Yeah. Gotcha. So you can't really just give it more juice. You know. <laughs> right. you, can't, you can't put a V12 in a in a Prius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, current current along a dive track can change quite a bit yeah. too with uh, height, change morphology. So well, we have video watch change here. What's up, Hawaii? We yes. got we got the um, we got the amazing twelve to four watch coming in the house, coming yep. in the holly, here in the control van, ready to uh, ready to take over. Um, we've had a great. Uh, four hours with you all. We're going to uh, miss you while we're right sleeping, here? and uh, we'll see you see you again in the morning when we should still be in the water. And you can enjoy another uh, blue water ascent Ooh. with the, with the legendary eight to twelve watch. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> they they trust us too oh, much with no. blue water. <laughs> they do. They do. This is, uh, this is Daniel Kinzer, science communication fellow. Aloha, ahui ho. Right. Aloha, mahalo nui, ahui ho until we meet again. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Mahalo nui, ai po malie.
All right. Welcome to the middle watch. Front row, it looks like we're settled in back here on the science side. Standing by. All right. We appear to be going side slope. Yep. You may have heard the update from the last watch. We're doing well on rocks. They've just sampled another one. We have three overall. I think once we get up above 2,000 at the, and at the next slope break, when we see the, the rubble, we might consider taking another one. The front bio box, they said, is full. So they said not to open the front bio box. And finally, they have a sample that's stuck in the slurp tube. Roger, and no samples. And advise working that out on deck. No slurps, no front bio box, and no rocks. Roger. <laughs> well, no rocks yet. We're, we're good on rocks. They just got one. See that. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in from um, all around the world in the US, Netherlands, UK, Germany, Italy, Ireland, Switzerland, Australia, Philippines, Norway, Malaysia, Spain, Egypt, and Canada. Um, thank you so much for joining us on the middle watch and continuing on this dive on Gambia Shoal. Zoom out for me. I'll go ahead and let the front row make sure they're well adjusted um, after the change of watch and then we'll go ahead and uh, do a round of introductions. What's uh What's after waypoint seven? So, yeah, south for the rest of the dive. All right. Here. Where do, you, where do you think we are now? We're just... Any of it's uh, going to be side hilling, so uphill is uh, to the west. Go up the hill for a while, see what happens. Westish. Um, um, and again, Dan or other people in the front row, whenever you're feeling like you're in a good position, we can uh, go ahead and uh, introduce ourselves. Yeah, we're working things out right now. Okay, just let Thank us you. know. Yeah, I can't hear what's happening, so <laughs> whenever you're uh, ready. Yeah, let's do, yeah. Roger. Sorry, we're just trying to find uh, something to look at besides cobbles. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no worry. And if you're talking on the map about the map or anything, feel free to come on SBL so we can hear about the terrain too. Morning. Can we please step two zero at two two zero? Thank you. You can uh, change your change your uh, bearing to that, Jacob. Please. Five for me. I'll run out. Run up to the. Uh uh, just look west for me. Look west, please. Yeah. Bathy something? Yes, so bathy bathies. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. In back row, just for your reference, we're 300 meters away from waypoint seven. Roger. Bridge nav. Can we please step to zero at two four zero? Thank you. Upashna, uh, looks like the previous watch was able to get a sample of the um, sea pen you're thinking of. That's great. Yes, so uh, during our previous watch, we had 
seen uh, a pseudo umbilula, which was formerly classified as an umbilula, but now is uh, the, the family umbilulidae has been split into two families, the pseudo umbilulidae and the umbilulidae. So if the polyp number of polyps is less than 15, it's in that family, but uh, we still have there's still a lot unknown about that genus and that family. So since then, we saw, um, I think, 11 or 12 more of those uh, pseudoumbilulas, and one of them has been collected. Oh, okay, so one whole polyp? Yeah, one oh, whole wow. colony so has been collected. Look, that will be your sample, and you'll look at like the shape and morphology or take a DNA sample from yes, it? Yes, I will be using a subsample of it. The majority of uh, the colony will be going to MCZ, and yes, once it comes up, I'll Zoom definitely. Zoom on the map again for me, please. First, note down the morphology, the length, the number of polyps, the arrangement, Zoom. and then the use a subsample for my genetics and yeah, genomic nice. studies. Oh, nice. oh can't wait to see your sketches of yeah. it. You, you continue to sketch, sketch yeah. the things you've been seeing. Once it comes up, yeah, that's going it. to be interesting. Okay. Oh, that's good, thanks. Looks pretty flat all the way through seven. Yeah, can we have a... Uh, hold on a sec. Zoom in there, video, please. Yes, that would be great. Okay, so that looks more like a uh, Staropathy's black coral. So, yeah, definitely a black coral, most probably the genus Staropathy's, uh, but we'll know more from the chat. Thank you so much. We can continue. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Out of all the coral groups that we've been seeing, like the black corals and the bubblegum corals and um, the fans, uh, which coral group do you think is like the most well understood and studied and which is like the least understood? I think at this point at a family level, um, I would say more or less they're at the same. Well, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah but uh, so. at the genus or species level, we uh, so several, there are several there the genera stuff. that are highly understudied and read and I feel like uh, we want to go yeah. up the hill some more hmm. it feels like we want to go up the hill some more so we'll let it swing in here a little see what we get we're in this kind of cobble pebble What's that? I can't, sorry, couldn't hear you back there. 
Sorry, are you talking? Uh, uh, not us. Roger. How's that? Yeah, let's try a 50 meter move on this. See what happens. Looks like we're getting out of the cobbles here a little. Uh, new 50 meter west. Let's see what happens. I'll get up on the slope a bit there. Just for some more context on our dive, we're currently located roughly 25 nautical miles southeast of Midway Atoll. Um, this area was previously mapped before by RV Falcor in 2014, and then we uh, recently remapped it before this dive. Um, this is the first dive, and we're currently exploring the um, northern ridge. So uh, I can't show you a photo, but it kind of looks like a four-pointed star with like or like a compass um, and there's a ridge facing north west east and south and we're kind of going along this northern track um, again we'll be we have been collecting rock samples and uh, biological samples and we'll be bringing those up to learn more What's about. No, oh, I'm just looking around them while I wait for the boat. Whether this area was formed over the Hawaiian hotspot or is Cretaceous in origin. Now you can kick it up to point three. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still wondering why it's called a shoal. I guess it's because it's a area of lesser depth yeah but it's not that less also because uh i think the top is 1700 meters or something like that right so given the word shoal i'd expected it to be at a shallower depth honestly yep yeah. yep and the de one definition has the detached elevation of the sea bottom comprised of material that is not rock that may endanger surface navigation oh okay yeah, this says it has a summit depth of about 1,600 meters. About 1600 That's not endangering service depth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well. It's a good name. It's a very enticing name. Yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting. Uh, we have been passing some um, Borosoma sponges, and there was also a Polyopogon sponge. The vertical line randomly going is not, right? Okay.
And we have been able to go over through some of our recent dives and footage. So um, if you haven't been able to check that out um, on our Instagram page, we just recently, and TikTok, we just recently showed a recap of um, some uh, deep sea fish that we've seen. Uh, there's also a uh, recap video of that dive we did in that area with so many pink corals and um, all the midway dives are online as well. Um, there's one longer summary of the dives and uh, one for each uh, aircraft carrier that we uh, were able to get a closer look at. So um, feel free to check those out and um, we're hoping to release some more photos and highlights soon, so stay tuned. That's fun. Oh, that's a nice fish. Can we have a quick zoom on it, if possible? Thank you. Sure, you can push in a little bit there. Okay. Good, thanks. So. Hold that. Oop. Okay. Definitely, uh, probably a Ophidiformis fish. Now that's quite a long one. Let's note down the features. Very thin dorsal fin, comparatively thicker. And long. Uh, is it one of the... Uh, the Catetic, the Bathytidae family ones, but Look I'm not sure. Know. It's quite a long one. Not a macro -uted, definitely uh, Ophidiformis. Okay, uh, we can go white text. Okay, thank you. Let's see. Can you share a little bit about why these fish seem to have like very narrow tails of these deep sea fish? like the rat tails and um, they also have like certain um, fins that seem to be modified as well? Yeah, uh, so it's just a particular group of fishes that we are looking at. So there are two groups, the um, gadiform fishes which has the family Macrouridae and the Ophidiformis. So these tend to have this elongated body and the ones with the Ophidiformis are generally called the rat tails which are known for their very uh, narrow, how their body tapers uh, towards the end and forms very narrow tails. Um, it's just one of the features that we see and generally having an elongated slender body helps in the current, so that that is an advantage. <laughs> right, we were just seeing how it's like kind of yeah, drifting even exactly. though the tail was moving. And yeah. also, if uh, even if we see the helosaurids or the other true eel-like fishes, they all have long elongated bodies in the deep sea. It's just the uh, angler fishes which have a more flattened and wider bodies, but they are more, they stay closer to the sea floor and even though they swim, they don't really swim long distances so much. So it helps them to be near, closer to the sea floor or on the sea floor and uh, be perched. But as with most fishes, having that elongated and flattened structure helps. But it's just one, one or two families where we see that rat tail like structure. Right. But this one, I was not at all sure what fish it was. But let's let's check. We'll have yeah. a. Yeah, I think it's so interesting. When I took a fisheries course and we were learning about how like the specific shape of a shark's tail actually helps it generate yeah. some lift, right? Because exactly. sharks, um, if I remember, it was like they don't have a gas splatter like other fish. Instead, they have this really oily liver. Yeah. And um, that's why they have a certain, that like characteristic shark tail. Yeah, where the, the horizontal. The top, yeah, tail, is a yeah. little longer than that bottom part. Yes. Do you want another move or settle in? That's a nice um. antimastus. Uh, I want to drip it a minute. That was also seemed to be moving pretty fast in the current. Is there a strong current still? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that fish was really mm -hmm. 
drifting across this flat area. We also increase the speed 0.1 knot. Roger. Did it look like this one? No. But it's like it more longer. triangle. Yeah, this one is more triangle. Yeah, I think we were again seeing some uh, with the uh, hydroid. This one? This one? Let's see if we have like a longer. Oh, yeah. Push in on pink. Oh, it's one of those blind lobsters. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's so cool. We haven't seen any of we, these. We have. We have. We oh have. Right. <laughs> it's like, during, I think, the first or the second uh, dive. They're oh, really tiny. Wow. This yeah. one seems bigger. No, the blinds, uh, these are generally quite big. Uh, I'll tell you though. Hmm? I can't hear anything else. Oh yet. my god. Hans, the still cam is up now. I have it written down somewhere. Are you saying push the button? <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can push that button. When the composition is good. <laughs> Hans, the artist. To the left, uh, four or five for me, please. Homerion species? H O M E R Y O N. Maybe, let's check. That's the blind lobster. And the fish, yeah, let's. let's uh, Homerion species. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's, no, wait, 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 did I spell it wrong? Supposed to drop off to each side, right? Yeah, I think it's uh, the Homerion genus, at least. Yeah. 
Yeah, drop right down and uh, see what the sonar shows us. The fish next. So for the blind lobster, does it not have eyes or the eyes don't function because um, they live in the deep? Do uh, we know more about them? The uh, I don't, but I will try to find out. That's what I was thinking. I really don't know much about uh, these blind uh, lobsters. Same as my yeah, me too. I was just looking at uh, blind lobsters. Yeah, there I are several kinds, actually. Let's see what we get. Uh, genius, uh, but mm, genius lobster. But also another says that the another genus the that's wait this species uh, shrimp. I'm uh, looking at this page from... Oh, Noah is also calling it the Acanthocaris. Acanthocaris seems like a more familiar name to me. Which courtesy Noah... Yeah, the blind lobster Acanthocaris seeker was observed... Okay, Mia, yeah, let's try um, southerly heading a uh, hundred meters south. Can Canthocaris. It can be a Canthocaris. Why did I come up with the name Homerion, even though it is a shrimp? So or one, 190 maybe. Yes. It's a. Did you just say it's a shrimp? So it's a blind lobster. 200, okay. yeah. That's so uh, yeah. I have it written down as the genus Homerion, but I also know that the Canthocaris can look like that. Uh. Yeah, I'm looking at this page by the um, Smithsonian. Yeah. And it has this picture of this blind lobster, and I am totally guessing here, but the eye kind of looks like, if that is the eye, kind of like white. So. Do they say what genus that is of the specimen? Um, it doesn't say what genus, just the species name. What is this? Dinochelis alsubelli. Okay, yeah, that is probably another one. Yeah, and this one was discovered in the Philippine Sea okay. at 300 meters or 980 Sorry. feet deep. Okay. Um, and by a census of marine life expeditions. So that's also a really interesting yeah. thing. Um, if you're not familiar with the Census of Marine Life, it was an international project that recorded uh, the diversity, different creatures, the distribution, where they are, and the abundance, how many of them there are in the ocean. And it was a pretty huge project. It spanned 10 years and um, more than 2,700 scientists from 80 countries contributed. And they actually created a database, the International Ocean Biogeographic Information System, or IOBIS. Um, and this basically has like a ton of different uh, measurements and records of where these species are. Uh, so definitely check that out if you want to um, learn about more of these different uh, kind of unique marine creatures. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, there's about 30 million records and 2,600 papers created, so pretty amazing. And that way we have a bit of a baseline so we can also know how things will change in these areas where we have records. Yeah, it was a sponge. Yeah. I can see it. It 
we get a better ID on the fish? I cannot hear you at all. Okay. Yeah, that's the first one that I thought, but the, the last ones that we saw of this went this big. I don't know if they can go this big. The one that you just opened, the Hawaiian says. Yeah, that's the first one that I guessed it would be, but... What is that? Yeah, this one? No. No, the shape is different. Good for a zoom there. I think we've seen that before. Uh, yeah, that's a stalked crinoid. Yep. I don't think we have seen actually. S is it a stalked crinoid I or a crinoid on, on a, a bamboo? Yeah. yeah, it's on a bamboo coral. But yeah. that's a beautiful color for yeah, a different color than yeah. we've seen. Beautiful observation, thank you. It's a pretty color. Mm -hmm. And we have some shout outs from our viewers, some students. Thanks for tuning in and um, glad National Geographic brought you here. Hope we can share some information about the deep sea with you. Um, thanks for exploring with us and also some greetings from the Netherlands. Again, thanks for tuning in. We're taking some still cam photos and it looks really scary. <laughs> looks we all like went, a spider. At the same time, but my SPL was off. <laughs> Sorry, Jane, if we took like five pictures of that one thing. <laughs> She's gonna have to start charging pretty soon. <laughs> Interesting place for a sponge. I know, I was thinking that. It's kind of just hanging out there on its own. And the base looks a little weird. It leaves the rocks and goes for the sediment. There's got to be a little rock there. Come down uh, five meters. Is that a peduncle? No, <laughs> that's just a base. <laughs> Peduncle is only used for the sea pens. Got it. Because it's the lower part of the colony that remains inside the sediment. Everything but else for here is on top of the sediment. But I think peduncle can be used for other situations too, right? Like the caudal peduncle that's is actually, like... Yeah, that's commonly right? used, but that's a very uh, debated term. Ah, okay. Actually, fish biologists don't like the word caudal peduncle. Okay. I was just <laughs> seeing a meme about it the other day. Really? Yes, There's a whole meme about caudal peduncles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
that, you know, how terms in biology are in use, but they're actually not terms. Right. So, hmm. interesting. Uh, yeah. So, according to the original descriptions and taxonomy, peduncle is the lower part of a C pen. Oh, that was the, the original first use of that word. I don't know if it's the first use. That's okay. like the current definition of it. Oh. And everywhere else, it's just a, uh, it's a use of the word, but not a. Mm. This is not the elephant ear spot? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. The polio polga. One of the kinds. Thank you so much. Upashna, I love when you walked in for our dinner shift and like as soon as you sat down they were saying peduncle and you were just like, We don't like using that word and everybody <laughs> in the room was like, Oh <laughs> It was great. I actually did talk to Sebastian at dinner about it. Yeah. The term. Oh wow. He said it was contested. Hotly contested. Hotly wow. hotly contested. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little. He definitely said it was contested. <laughs> we have a list of words Pashna does not like. Peduncle, soft coral, hard coral. Yeah, <laughs> hmm. clicks in there while we, while we get out of here. Mm, a little too far. Sorry, I'm up high on the rock right this. Yeah, it is that um, it is in the family Chrysogorgiid and uh, it has a different genus which I cannot pronounce. I will try but okay. it's not good because thank you so much. We had a question about what is the water temperature right now. So down in the deep ocean, the water temperature is very, very cold. Um, and you can actually see on our um, web page, we have some different uh, statistics or different Let's measurements. Come up um, for me. Yep, coming towards you. Let me confirm. Yeah, this would be a Plurogorgia militaris. Correct. Sorry. No, it's okay. Currently, the water temperature is 1.7 degrees Celsius, um, so almost freezing, and um, you can keep track of that if you'd like on our web page. Sorry, Upashana, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just, uh, yeah, so the chrysogorgia that we saw right now, which kind of looked like a primoid from a distance, the white one, that was a plurogorgia militaris. And it looks like we have some students turning, tuning in from um, Laos, and they would like to ask what um, our most interesting discovery has been so far during this dive, or not this dive, but the expedition. Did you want to share, or anyone feel like sharing? I think there has been uh, several interesting observations. It's very difficult to single right? out. Yeah. I would see all the predation events that we saw, uh, be the sea stars feeding on the corals. Well, that's a nice bathy bathies again. <laughs> um, or the crabs feeding on the dead octopus. And then the huge octocoral fans and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, those ledges which had extremely high density of coral fans and yeah. with not just extremely high diversity but these enormous and gigantic f uh, sea fans that we saw so that itself was an experience um, I have seen certain corals that I had not seen before or observed before I just seen images of uh, including this 
Pluro Gorgia Militaris, I had just seen pictures of it in the guide. I had not seen it. And there are several others. Um, it's really hard to yeah, see know. one. It's been yeah. an amazing past several weeks. Yeah. yeah. The sea stars, you know, sitting by the sponge and resting, yeah. climbing. <laughs> then uh, yeah, several coral fans, several fans. Some of the sea cucumbers, oh, the stalked uh, tunicate. Uh, oh, I love that one. Yeah. The predatory tunicate. The